good morning and welcome to part two of the factory uh, lots of things to show you today including a rough sketch of what the factory will look like to give you a better idea um, but lots of things uh, that are needed for the factory have actually arrived um, so I'm going to go through those first and then we'll look at the uh, preliminary sketch shall we say uh, I bought a bag of these these came to £4.9 uh, they're quite heavy uh, I'm not actually going to use these as working cogs I should point that out uh, but various aspects of the factory uh, there is rotation in it and I shall be adding cogs to it for its authenticity do you know what I mean uh, basically this factory is a Victorian factory uh, but set probably in the 1950s, 60s, maybe 70s, I don't know. But the whole aura, the look of the factory, were very Victorian. Um, so I thought these would be really good. And uh, yeah, there's some great ones, some really tiny ones in there. I can get them out, but uh, yeah, you get a rough idea. I thought they were a bargain for four quid. Uh, I wouldn't like to make them, put it that way. Uh, so that's those. Uh, what else arrived? Oh yeah. Uh, this is actually something to scale. Tools. They're great, aren't they? They're actually made of metal, believe it or not. These tin snips, or pliers, whichever they are, actually work. And there's a little toolbox to go with it. I noticed it was very shiny when I got it, so I've knocked it down with a bit of sandpaper. Give it some age. I shall oil stain it as well, I think as it's going to go in the basement which we'll talk more about in the drawing anyway those were let's have a look at the price of those it was £2.81 not bad eh uh, yeah it came all the way from China I have to say you can buy them in this country but they cost considerably more so uh, if you're prepared to wait you'll save a bit of money it all comes from the same place doesn't matter what you do so um, regardless of your feelings on buying from China Unfortunately, almost everything we can see comes from China now. That's the reality of it. So anyway, that's the toolbox. Gives me an idea for some scale. Um, oh yeah, I mustn't forget this. Um, right. Another module. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what this one does. If you apply power to it... Um, you put 240 volt in, 240 volt out, uh, and uh, it's a trigger system. Oh, so it's a timer and a relay. So what happens is, once you trigger this, it will run for a set period of time, uh, which is the way I envisage the factory. So they'd get, I don't know, perhaps two minutes use out of it, three minutes, whatever, and you can set the adjustment on that on this. So uh, once the coin because uh, I've got a coin mechanism, we're coming to that in a minute. Once the coin mechanism is up and running, it will trigger this, and then the whole factory will work for whatever, two or three minutes. So that's what that is. Uh, and that was £3.96. Pretty good. Yeah, simply enough, that's what that does. Uh, so we're on to the coin mechanism. Uh, this was £9.87 and uh, it's quite nifty, it's got all the bits on the front that you'd expect on a coin mechanism uh, but you can program it, this is the great thing so uh, there are actually these are LEDs along here and then you've got a display and you train it to whatever coins you use in your particular country you see so you'd put, you set it into programming mode and you'd put I think 15 uh, coins preferably from slightly different areas so that if, after a bit if you put 15 2p coins in it it knows what a 2p coin is and you can set it on the display here it'll register as uh, 2p uh, in my case i think this is going to be more the 10p 20p mark i think 20p ago seems reasonable um because I thought, I mean, it's never going to be out in the real world, you know, taking money. Uh, but what it may be good for is school fates, that kind of thing. And I'd happily take it along for that. So 10p, 20p a go, I think it's quite reasonable, isn't it? So if we said 20 pence a go, and they get two minutes, whatever, uh, this thing will need to know what a 10p coin is. 
and the 20p coin i'm not really going to mess about with 5p coins so if they put a 5p coin in it'll just come straight out or any other coin it'll take 10ps and 20ps so that's how i envisage programming that uh, as i say that was under 10 quid and i think that's pretty good there will of course be an override switch so you don't necessarily have to put your money in to get a thing to work depends on the scenario but i think for home use yeah put 10p in or 20p in and off it goes so that's the coin mechanism uh, along with that um i've got these toggle switches because the the factory is going to be interactive and that's uh, key for me and i rather like these they're heavy duty they're old-fashioned toggle switches and i think great for kids you know they're going to be able to flick those no problem and uh, because they're heavy duty they're going to take all the abuse you can possibly think of so uh, yeah um and when we get to the drawings you'll see why i need the toggle switches i haven't finalized everything for the factory uh, but yeah i'm definitely going to have those they will fit in with the look of it uh, as far as connecting all the electrics i'm using these away go style connectors uh, which are pretty good you just pull the levers right up on these insert your wire and then push the lever back down again so i've got less soldering to do uh, that's what i thought for those um these are drop down modules and because this runs off a five volt supply and i'll show you the power supply in a minute uh, there may be something i don't really want to run in 12 volt i can't see that much of this factory is going to need 12 volt the only thing i'll need 12 volt is the coin mech and i don't mind having a separate supply for that so everything else is uh, five volt but this allows you to drop down so if i needed three volts it could be for an led or something like that i can use a drop down module and again these are adjustable there's a little screw on there you can turn those so five volt here in whatever voltage you want out you can measure it but it's capable of three amps uh, which brings me on to the power supply right i'm just moving a few things out of the way it's a whopper there we go uh, 240 volt in five volt out uh, i'm not sure i nearly really need 10 amp but hey let's uh, err on the side of safety uh the power supply was uh £8.39 and uh, they are quite well made i've got to say uh, and i can hide this in the factory easily uh, in the design so it, that'll disappear so that's the power supply on some more fun stuff i've got four bags of these four bags of ducks which come from fiver i think there's 80 of them in all my son rather took to these uh, but they're going down one of the conveyor belts one of them will be ducks they will actually be swamped with rubber ducks that's the idea so you'll see all these little ducks going down the conveyor belt it'll look cool wouldn't it uh, that was my idea for one of the floors so there's our duck off down the conveyor belt yeah so that's the ducks uh, modeling clay uh, need that to make some of the characters so I've got a pound of Sculpey. This is, uh, if you're familiar with FIMO and that type of stuff, you'll know what this stuff is. It's polymer clay. And uh, this is in a flesh tone, so it'll largely do the body. I haven't quite worked out on how um, I'm going to dress these figures. I may just do it with the clay itself. That's possible. Uh, or Because it's very difficult. I, I know from having dealt with projects in the past that unless you use a very, very thin material, it'll look bulky. So we'll, we will see when we come to developing the characters. They're not uh, what I would call true to life characters. They'll be somewhat exaggerated to make them funnier. Uh, but they will all be about six inches tall. That's the height of the characters. So therefore the height of the factory, ideally, it want to be a lot higher than that. But as, um, I will probably make the height about eight foot. Um it doesn't matter too much if they're cramped in there it's just the whole thing because i don't want the factory to get too big so if you imagine that we've got six times eight inches uh so that's going to be roughly the height of the thing so we're looking about five foot something like that uh depending on how many floors i do uh but i think i envisage six because there'll be the basement for the maintenance man i've got very clear ideas about that 
then you've got the factory floors and then right at the top you've got the factory manager sitting in his office with his secretary on his lap because that's probably what he did yeah i've met a few factory managers <laughs> so anyway i got a, i got a bag of sculpey and this is actually a kid's one it's a kid's set and uh it came to i think it was 7.99 something like that was it uh yeah 7.99 more of an experiment uh because i'm not gonna be using too much in the way of bright colors uh but if i need to mix up a color and i'll probably have to get some more white um i can do that with these and get whichever tone i want really they are a little bit on the bright side but they are meant for small kids but it's the, basically the same clay as that you know similar consistency shall we say right so that's all the polymer clay i think we're piling up here aren't we now let's get on to oh yes um i've got a bottle of this it's hard to get this stuff at a reasonable cost because you don't get a lot in the bottle uh, but basically this is a it's a kind of glue and bake type thing with Sculpey because if you're adding very small details to things you know there's a good chance they'll fall off uh, so I use this which basically it's a kind of solvent for the clay um, and you put one drop on and that will bond the two together when it comes to baking them because uh, all of this stuff has to be baked got to actually harden doesn't need to be in the oven long but it doesn't need baking so yeah and I'm not I'm not trying to sell brands, it's just that that was the one that came up. Yeah, so, yeah, I've got 21 fluid ounces, I forget the cost, I think it was 6 quid. Uh, but I could see I was going to have problems with that. Uh, you, you can get other things in the range, you can get glazes and you can get glitter effects and all of that. But I don't think I'm really going to be needing that. A bit, bit chintzy for me. Uh, and this thing is great, and apparently all models use these. Let's see what it is. It's a DIY pipe straw kit. But the good thing about these, when they're painted down, they do look like industrial pipes. It doesn't cost too much. One ninety nine, I think it was, came through the post. Uh, so that's that. That will be part of the look. And they'll they'll get grubbed down, do you know what I mean? I've got the basement to do. I've got a boiler to make down there. And although the straws are clear, they can all be painted, whatever. So that was what arrived this week. So now it's time to look at the sketches. Now I haven't actually got the fixed proportions of this, but this is kind of how I got it in my head. Uh, there'll be a lot more detail than this, I can tell you. Uh, but starting at the top, we'll have the factory on a big sign and the roof. And a couple of sort of Victorian finials at the top, finials at the top, maybe a couple of windows in there. Uh, right at the top, we're going to have the factory manager sitting at his desk. Um, and it'll be just like a doll's house, so it'll have all the detail that you'd expect to find in there. And he'll have a chandelier, a fancy light, of course. And down on every floor, you've got stairs going up, stairs going down. Uh, They'll actually probably be the most expensive because I've got to put proper banisters in those. And you can buy them as kits, uh, but they're not exactly cheap. So I'm going to have to look around and see if I can get, get those in bulk and maybe get the price down on those. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be stairs all the way down so they can get into each floor. That's the basic idea. Uh, so on each floor, uh, there'll be a conveyor belt, the ends of which you will not see they'll be hidden behind that there'll be a... Uh, a board or something similar in front of the belt so you can't actually see the workings of the belt but you actually see everything going down the belt the belt itself let's have a look at that this is basically the construction of it it's basically two flat sides of wood and a roller at each end pin through and on one end i'll attach my five volt motor it'll be attached to this roller and the actual belt is made out of bicycle inner tube it's the ideal sort of thickness for it really uh, and then you stitch or glue the ends together stitch probably and uh, that will provide me belt unless i can find something sort of commercially that would do the job i think i'll have to make those but the actual conveyor belts themselves not too difficult um but it'll be fun when we actually get to those uh, my son is quite involved in this project because he's at wng wmg engineering academy 
and uh, although his interest is in design uh, when we start first started to talk about this project um, he came up with some good ideas uh, now if we start at the bottom and I'll come to all these floors one by one that's how I saw the maintenance man with the door slightly open sat on the toilet with his trousers around his ankles again not to scale but that's what it'll be done there'll be boiler and workbenches and all the other things maybe some guy over here working on this bench we will see um, this is the cake floor <laughs> uh, I kind of I had in my mind um, a very fat woman this end with one tooth and this end a very thin woman maybe with a hooked nose and a long chin with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. That's how I imagine her on the cake belt. Uh, other ideas that sprang to mind was someone sat under the belt eating the cakes as they go past. Yeah, so, and uh, in here there'll be, again, maybe not to scale because this could be a lot wider than it looks. Um, in here there'll be the sacks of flour, there'll be somebody, some action in here going on because as I say this whole thing is interactive so there'll be a panel of switches that you know kids or adults well, I think we're all alike uh, can flick to make various things in the factory go on and off um, on the next floor we've got eggs these will be eggs going down the conveyor belt and on this side a chicken coop with three chickens in it that for the most part are just sat there so one assumes that these three chickens are producing all these eggs and there'll be endless eggs. And one of the interactive switches, and if you watch part one, you'll see I had a sound module, which you can program with anything and record anything on it. Uh, so if they flick the correct switch, the voice will say, more eggs, this room will light up at the same time. And there's a guy here, he'll be with a flat cap with his sleeves rolled up and a long handle, you know, and a wheel attached to the side of it. He'll turn it frantically. The three chickens will be going up and down and all over the place as the eggs start to descend down here. Uh, so that's how I thought I'd do that one. Uh, next floor up, you know, I'm still thinking about all the different floors, and we haven't got all of them, obviously. Uh, there's another floor that can go in here. Um, uh, but anyway, one idea, that because it's just off the wall, but uh, perhaps metal buckets they could produce in metal buckets there's just so many things you could do with this and i think most of it all sort of come together as i get into the actual construction and uh, as i say my son uh, has got a bit of an engineering head as well and uh, when we were talking about the chickens he said oh you could use a cam for that and he's quite right uh, so you put underneath hidden under the um hen coop there'll be a shaft with three cams on it each chicken will be attached to the cam and they will move relative to it, depending on how you connect it at the bottom. So you'll get slightly different movement across all three chickens. Uh, but I like the thought of this man standing there with his glasses, and when it says, more eggs, he starts turning that handle frantically. Obviously, it'll just be attached to the handle. Uh, and then the eggs come tumbling down. Yeah, so it's really looking at, although I've got all the basics of the belts, it's looking at the interaction with those and they'll all sort of come to the fore as we go on. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic sketch and the idea of the construction of the conveyor belt. So really, I've got to start mapping this out now to sort of scale. As I say, the figures are, if you're working in on 12 scale, they're six inches high. Uh, and in, in, in a factory, of course, the floor's going to be 12 foot, maybe bigger than that. But we're scaling, we're cramping this down. It doesn't have to be. Uh, because this factory, of course, isn't real, is it? Um, so, you know, uh, for a six-inch figure, as long as it's got two inches above his head height, that would be ample. Uh, but all the walls of the factory will be brick. There'll be various girders, various pipes, bits and pieces. Lots of detail to go in. Um, but that's the basic premise of it. Uh, when I originally envisioged this as a dream, <laughs> uh, there were all kinds of cupboards and bits and pieces across the front. Uh and that may all well come into the mix towards the end, but that's the basic look of the factory. And uh, it'll be a single freestanding unit with, I think, a glass or perspex, depending, you know, on moving this thing around. And it's got to be able to stand on its own two feet. Uh, so I'll need to make a stand for it as well, so the whole thing sits and it's quite sturdy. 
and then all it needs is a 240 volt uh, point uh, to supply the power supply and and that's it and uh, obviously I've got to make room for the coin mechanism so I've got to decide where that's going to go uh, but that is essentially it uh, I came across this um, when I moved into my father's place and more about that as well in a minute but I uh, but it was a dancing coke bottle uh, which you don't see now. I don't think you can even buy them anymore. But um, it has a curious movement. It'll dance from side to side. And I thought, because it's only using well, a very low-powered battery in it, I forget what it is in the bottom, um, but again, one of those droppers could probably power this, and I could use the mechanism. I like the mechanism of it. So it could be anything. It could be... You know, stirring cake mix on one of these floors. Who knows? You know, you have to kind of think laterally, don't you? So, that those are the the rough sketches of what the factory's going to look like. You've got a better idea now, and then we'll flesh it out in more detail. Uh, this is going to be fairly slow, and the reason it's fairly slow is because I've got another channel uh, with a link below uh, called Ralph's House. Uh, but that's really about restoring a house. It was my father's house, and. Uh, it hadn't really had any major work done since since it was built. I think it was rewired in the 1950s or 60s, but that was it. Uh, so I've had to come in that to rewire it yet again uh, to modern standards. So if you want to have a look at all that and all the decorating and the plaster and the dust and the bricks, that if that's your bag, go and have a look at that. Otherwise, uh, stick with the factory, stay tuned because you know inevitably there'll be another video up it's just finding the space and the time um to start actually constructing this and uh, i am inclined rather than having to build one whole thing is actually look around for a display case into which i can build this and uh, it'll have to be pine or at least made of wood i don't want it made out of chipboard it's got to be robust um so that's something i'm still thinking about at the moment uh, so that's it really for the second from Ralph's house um, thank you for watching um, stay tuned uh, I'm not sure what's coming up in part three uh, but this was all about parts and all about the preliminary sketches and uh, I hope that gives you some idea of what's coming up